Hello everyone, I hope you're all enjoying Digital Leaders Week. My name is Nisa Burrell and I'm a Digital Change Manager at Hawley. If you aren't familiar with us, we are an award-winning engineering consultancy that provide innovative solutions to complex engineering and design challenges for buildings. If you want to know more, follow the link. In this session, I'm going to share with you some details about a gamified learning approach we use to deliver the software BIM 360. Like a lot of innovations, we started with a problem. We had a bunch of engineers, designers and consultants who already faced quite challenging demands on the time that come with their role. And then outside of our control came the pandemic, which brought all the additional challenges, such as balancing your tasks along with homeschooling, online call fatigue, and just getting to grips with how we will work from home now. However, we still needed to be able to deliver the upskilling and development of our people. But as people reported struggles with headspace, we started to notice an impact on how people prioritise training. We had people not turning up for sessions, or we may have seen some dropouts during the sessions themselves. And also those that did turn up may have been doing things at the same time. In addition to these challenges, people in the UK were also um, feeling the impact of isolation. We had a series of lockdowns which restricted the movement and the ability to come together in teams. We were having people reporting really um, that they were feeling disconnected. From an innovation point of view, we were really missing those stairwell discussions. You know, those impromptu chats when you're getting a coffee or the moments where you're just discovering what somebody else is up to. Um, even things like how we were feeling um, it didn't necessarily have to be about, you know, the work progress, but how we're sharing with each other and growing together. So it became more what content do we need to deliver and how to what does this mean for the end user? How can they get the most out of the training sessions in the current climate and how do we facilitate that? Um, at the same time, we were looking at running a digital engineering week, um, featuring a different set of initiatives, demos and interactive experiences that we felt could partner well with this um, training event. And it started us to think about how can we make this something that local teams themselves could take on, um, own and run. So really taking it out the hands of ourselves as the designers and the people that would traditionally run training events and into something that the local teams um, could deliver themselves. The ideation phase um, started with myself just proposing some ideas um, and then I brought the team of stakeholders together. These were actually some of the end users, um, some of our engineers and designers, but also some other L&D um, learning and development consultants. And I asked everybody to drop your thoughts and ideas onto this board, um, crazier the better. We then went through as a team, um, we debated the pros and cons for each option, it didn't matter how crazy the idea was, um, to really start to think about how we could use these to deliver a new experience. We ended up picking the escape room idea, um, mainly because some of our teams had actually done one of these events um, virtually as a team building exercise for a social and the feedback was great. Um, people had said that they'd had good levels of team connectivity through it. Um, but also for us, it meant that the end users would be familiar with the experience. So knowing how to pass a clue to enter the next space. Um, so the format could work for us. Um, but also for us, we could see it as something that would help team connectivity and provide a laugh, um, which for us is really important. Um, having fun became our hook to hang this learning experience on really. Our team involved with designing the learning was all remote. So we ended up using Nero or Moiro um, to run our series of planning sessions, matching the learning objectives to our actions, working out how our end users would interact um, with the experience and the tasks that we were asking them to do, and how um, carrying out those actions would actually meet um, our end goals, really. You know, with that end user experience and interaction provide the training that we were hoping for. Um, once we kind of as a team all agreed that the learning objectives were clear and would be understood, we then thought about actually how does that experience work? How would it feel? What is the benefit? 
Um, we were quite conscious as a team that if it didn't feel beneficial, we might start to lose people through the experience. Um, and finally, we thought of the products um, and byproducts from that experience itself. So again, that having a laugh piece, but also working with others, problem solving. BIM 360 is a great tool to be able to actually use with other products. Um, so how do we bring those together and start to show the end user the benefits and potential of this tool? So we were taking ourselves out of that work environment as well, um, where you'd be able to use this learning experience without worrying about breaking a real life project um, or ruin a model. Um, it wasn't refined overnight by any means, um, but we did have a really quick turnaround period. If we were to launch this within that digital engineering week, we had just four weeks. Um, so we had to plan sprints around ideation to delivery, um, through to refinement and testing, um, all within that four week period, as well as creating a new tool using a new method that you know, we'd never used before. So the process was really quick. Um, and in these sprints, it was important that we made decisions as we went. So as a team, we were sat there going, okay, are we happy? Yes. Great. You can build this. Brilliant. Please go prototype, bring it back to the table, and let's test it together. And it was just a series of those, really, um, a really iterative process until we were confident um, that the training goals and the experience were suitable for what we were trying to achieve. Um, it had to be something as well that our stakeholders could just pick up and run themselves, as I've mentioned before. So we needed to have those testing periods built in where we could actually pass it over for um, somebody to try out without having to have one of us designers in that space, in that room or on hand um, to really fix or run the event on the day. So in week three, we really pulled together some end users and passed it over to them with us sat quietly in the background making notes um, about how the experience went and the timings of each of the clues. And it really gave us insights into which bits we needed to refine or perhaps rethink um, with one week to go. When it came to marketing the event itself, we didn't want it to feel like another standard training event, um, particularly as it's being run in the midst of our digital engineering week, um, which had some different kind of initiatives, um, such as live panel speaking, um, some case studies, as well as some demos of new tools that we're creating at Holly. So we used a storyline that would connect the game itself with the um, current pandemic. Um, something a little bit tiny in cheek that was actually meant to be something and a chance for everybody to kind of like group together around and have common experience with. So that email um, was to go out as an invitation almost like to a social event. Um, and again, it was sent out from those local champions who took on running the task for us. Um, so they were leading the marketing campaign as well as running the actual training event itself. It was important for us as a design team to step out of the limelight, um, really to aid adoption. We all know that people do things for those that they have good levels of rapport with, um, particularly if it's something they don't necessarily want to do. Um, and this was meant to be, you know, something that was fun. So we thought it best to come from those people they already have rapport with. Um, essentially for us, the whole point of this game um, was also about demonstrating the benefits of taking local ownership of such initiatives um, to help drive transformation locally, um, as well as helping us get a level of um, a common approach, really. So we had a two for one going on in terms of being able to deliver effective training, but also helping our wider strategic business goals. On the screen, uh, you can see some real gameplay of the gamified learning event. Um, so you can hear how people are responding and you can see the type of tasks we'd had planned out for people and how that happened within the actual software space. Okay. Welcome to the hospital. You will need to find two vaccines and get your vaccine passport to leave the hospital. Complete in the escape room. Click over the link. So if you click on that link. Yeah. Okay. Just press play, yeah. Ready, everybody. Welcome to the hospital. You will need to find two vaccines and get your vaccine passport to complete the escape room. This is your first clue. Follow okay. the link or scan the QR code to solve the puzzle. Okay. Match the code to your next location. So. Oh my god, it's literally a puzzle. Okay. It is literally a puzzle. So if you <laughs> like all want to do it, so like I mean, it's probably 
quicker if we do it together or oh, near. Yeah, if we put them near the. Babe. Hey. 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 All right. So keep that. So if you keep go back open. to the BIM 360. Yeah. Don't close this. Otherwise, you have to do it again. Okay. Uh, he will tell you here. So basically, uh, this is your first crew. Follow the link or scan the QR, blah, blah. OK, so it says match the code to your next location. So, so in the puzzle, you can see there's a few numbers and a few letters. You need to find the next. The, well, then you need to find the next room to go to by looking at the numbers in. Uh, okay. One, two, eight, okay. six. Eight, okay. six. It's the corridor, isn't it? One, eight, two, six. Yes, yes, yes. Click on that. Click on that. Oh, you follow I, that I, have link. I haven't used kinship, so. <laughs> That's okay. We'll, we'll do it together now anyway. So if you if you follow <laughs> that link that is given you in the description, that opens up the kinship, uh, kinship hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and OK, if you Collections, read. I'm Ooh. guessing. Collections <laughs> <laughs> yeah. gate model by any chance. Oh. <laughs> does, does it project fitting? Do not no. use this family except for in the escape model, lol. Yeah, OK, <laughs> so, so go. Yeah, yeah, if you go back there, yeah, go back and read what it says. Contact information <laughs> parameter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can I click on it? Uh, yeah. 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 Parameters. Yeah, good shout. So what do they need? What do they need? In terms of feedback, it was overwhelmingly positive. We had 12 teams play on the day, and all of them said they'd recommend it to others. Um, we'd also asked them to rate the experience out of five, and they gave it a 4.33. So for us, we were very pleased to hear that. We also had some nice anecdotal feedback. Um, someone who had played said that they were skeptical at first. Um, but they, they genuinely enjoyed it and that they wanted to do more training events like that going forward. So from our point of view, we were very happy to hear that. Going forward, we know now that this is a tool that we can use um, when it comes to firmware training initiatives. Based on the feedback of this particular gamified learning experience for BIM 360, we're confident to scale this up for the rest of the firm. And we're also um, enabling it to be used by more than the 12 groups that initially played it by actually um, showing some other people actually the format of it and letting the local office take ownership of running that, particularly for new starters into the firm. It was also quite reassuring for us that from, you know, ideation through to delivery, it took a month. Um, and actually that could have been quicker if we were together rather than remote in terms of design phase. Um, but if you used to compare that to the traditional classroom learning experience or either creating new e-learning suites, um, it was probably about the same time, if not faster, um, to create an event that people gave you know, better feedback on. Although we can't let you into the BIM 360 model itself, um, we are actually happy to share a link to the Matterport model with you. So please do follow the links, go and explore the rooms and have a look at the clues um, for yourself. If you have any questions on this or the gamified learning approach, um, please do submit your questions to the chat, um, to the comments below, and I'll do my best to respond. Otherwise, thank you all for listening and I hope that you enjoy the rest of Digital Leaders Week. <laughs>